serious light eye burn and the stool. Hi guys, welcome back. Nathan Willits from Cambridge Auto Gleam, trying to make another little video for you. Uh, it's a Sunday, I'm in on a Sunday to try and get a head start on the week. Uh, I've got this lovely deep blue C63 Mercedes AMG uh, that Jules has done uh, PPF front end fitment. Uh, and now I am, you can probably see behind me, the, uh, there's quite some deep swirls and marks. So I just wanted to show you again, some more of the machine polishing process. I've gone through it in other videos, but it's, um, it's worth uh, going over again, showing you exactly what you can do with machine polishing. Uh, if you haven't already, check out the Instagram channels at Cam's Auto Gleam. And there's a new one, which is at G-Technic Cambridge, um, where I'm trying to show some more of the kind of, just the finished photos really. If you want to see more of the, um, behind the scenes almost and uh, what else I get up to. That's uh, at Cam's Auto Gleam, but there's another one at G Technic Cambridge. So give those a follow and um, you'll see more of what I'm up to in the week. Let me get onto this now. I'll grab the camera and show you um, some of the marks closer up. Um, I'll show you the other side, which I've uh, already done. Uh, the tail end of last week, I finished that. Um, so it's just a couple more panels to do, but let me show you. Right, so as you can see, pretty heavily swirled. Obviously all those swells and then reflecting the color of the light, something I've spoken about before, um, when the light bounces off the angle of a swirl or a, a minute scratch, then you see the color of the light and it kind of robs the paint of the true color. And then when it's all polished, which I'll show you afterwards, um, you can then see the true color of the paint. But we've got a multitude of different marks here. So general swells from poor washing and just wiping the paint down when it's had dirt on it. There's then some deeper scratches that you can see like they're all running all the way along the sill. Where's my finger in the camera? All running all the way along the sill here. There's a nice deep scratch. And then there's some buffer trails in there as well that you can see right on the bottom that are the very finer ones where you can't really see a swirl as such, but you can just see that hologram effect. If I try and hold the camera and point, um, they're kind of arcing out here. See them there dancing away just on that bottom section so quite a few marks to try and correct on this section there's also a lot of stone rashing up the side which will improve but won't com come out completely but obviously again zoom out you can see those buffer trails on that lower section just dancing around and then all the swirls as well not a good looking panel but we're gonna improve it hugely and here again just with the handheld inspection light uh, all the way along, along this lower section. Loads of marks just robbing it of the clarity. But if you look up on the top section, which is why I, which is why I grabbed the handheld light, this section has been corrected. Um, huge difference as you go down. All the swirls. And then nice clear paint. This is yet to be refined. It's just had the initial cut uh, with Koch Chemi H8, I think it's called. Uh, but I'll just run through the polishes I'm using in a short moment. Again, when you come down, all of the swell marks. Right, let me show you the polishes. Uh, so I've run through the polishing machines that I used in a previous video, but let me just show you again. So this is one that I'm using almost on every detail now. I don't know why I'm turning it around so much quickly. Um, let me just hold it straight so you can see it. Uh, this is the Rupes, Rupes, however you want to pronounce it. I think it's supposed to be Rupes. Um, Bigfoot Duetto. This replaced like the DAS 6 and the red DAS 6 Pro that I used to use where you could actually swap the heads on it between a um, medium sized pad like this and a small pad. So it's quite good for um, if you are just getting into detailing and you only wanted to buy one machine. These ones, you can't swap the head size, so you're stuck to this, I think it's a five and a half inch pad, um, which to be fair is, is great for most big panels. Um, sections like, like this, it's kind of, it's the ideal size to be on, on over, either of those two top sections. And then once you get down into these smaller sections, you then step down to the smaller one, which I'll show you in a minute. But the principle is that it's a free spinning head um, and it's motor driven to oscillate just like can you see that just like that and the oscillation motion then spins the head i've got these black dots drawn on the side so you can see when it's actually spinning because when the machine's vibrating away sometimes you think oh it's spinning but then, then you can see those 
those black dots, they're just kind of doing this. So unless it's actually rotating, you're not going to be getting a true correction. But on this particular piece of paint, I used it on the top sections, but on the lower sections, I'm going back to the good old, oh, this is so heavy. So this is a polish that I've had since I started detailing 14, 15 years ago. I lose track now. Um, it's an old Sealy, all the stickers have worn off it. It weighs a ton. Um, you can properly kind of press down on, it, on the panel and it will carry on spinning. But it's a good old tool so sometimes a rotary like this is uh, still needed uh, and what i've done on the other side is i did one or two hits with the rotary just to take off um kind of 80 90 percent of the marks and then the ones that were remaining i could then focus on with the dual action polisher i'll show you the i'll show you the process in a second quickly let me just show you as well uh, so this is then the the smaller rupes um, big but mini smaller head when you compare it to the uh, Bigfoot so I think like I say that's a five and a half inch and that is a three inch uh, pad and um, so much better for going around these lower smaller sections on the sill um, where this is just too big to really kind of get in there. Um, as for the polishes, um, Koch Chemi H8, no idea why they call it H8 so I just tend to call it Koch Chemi Red and then because it's very hard paint i'm actually finishing down with koch chemi f5 or koch chemi yellow and um, the purple one uh, which again i've forgotten the number of it but that's their true finishing polish but it just didn't seem to make much of a, have much of an effect because the paint is so hard it wasn't really strong enough to take out the the kind of slight haze that this one's leaving so that was strong enough to take out the haze and because it's very hard paint it was actually then uh, fine enough to finish down to a, a real jeweled um, crisp finish. Um, on other paints you'll have to experiment, you might be able to go straight from this to the purple one, um, but on this one, on this particular car, red to yellow seems to be the perfect combination. Right, polishing time. Polishing time, right, and before I do the little product recommendation, and it's quite an expensive one this week, um, are these Sony let me see if it will focus in. Uh, are these Sony headphones? They're Bluetooth noise cancelling headphones. I have had some Sony ones previously. Let me grab those. So these were the ones, like way back, I used to just use in ear um, 3M protective buds that took the worst of the polishing noise away. Um, I stepped up to these ones. I think these are about £70 on Amazon. The model I'll put in the description, but these are the MDR ZX 770BNs. Um, I think they've updated them, but they're around 70 or 80 pounds. Uh, Bluetooth noise, noise cancelling. The noise cancelling didn't work brilliantly. It tended to just change the pitch of the polisher to a bit of more of a high pitch whine in your ear. Um, but it's great being able to listen to music, listen to podcasts, hear if I've got a call coming in, take the call on the headphones. Uh, so these actually made a huge difference to my detailing uh, workflow. Um, obviously Bluetooth, rechargeable, they lasted easily a day, usually two days before I had to recharge them. Um, quite comfortable on the head. Um, and just without them even being turned on, the actual noise isolation is pretty good. But having tried these for £80, I thought it was a nice little entry level into the um, Bluetooth headphone market. I wanted to try the Bose um, Quiet Comfort 2s. Um, wasn't actually that impressed with the sound quality. I thought they didn't sound any better than my 70 pounds um, previous Sonys. And bearing in mind the Bose, I think I paid 2.89 for those. They were on special offer. So quite a price jump, but I didn't think they sounded an awful lot better. So I started Googling around and these, the Sony, uh, these are the, these are the WH-1000XM3s. So these are the current um, top of the line ones that, that Sony do for Bluetooth, I think. These actually had a slightly better review than the, the Bose. They're maybe not quite as pretty. I don't know, it's up to subjective, it's up to you. Um, they're about the same weight as the, as the Bose. And I had the Bose and these side by side for a while, so I was able to try them back to back. And the sound quality of these I found was better. Uh, through the app, you can actually change the bass and treble response and everything if that's of interest to you. But the noise cancelling is superb. Um, it really does cut out a huge amount. Um, so, yeah, so these are this week's product recommendation. Um, £330, I think, RRP, although they tend to get discounted down on Amazon to 289 
Um, so like I say, quite an expensive product recommendation this week, but if you're a detailer polishing day in, day out, uh, they're pretty invaluable. Um, green 3M cutting pads on the rotary with that much polish, if you can see it. I'm gonna put my headphones on to cut the drone of the machine out. But because I've got this new little microphone, let's just see if I can talk to you while I'm polishing. If I cut music in suddenly over this, it's because you can't hear me and you obviously, you don't want to hear the polisher up that way. Uh, and so we don't start rubbing all of this dust around on the panel that I've just polished. Um, use the airline to give that a blow off. Right, and that's taken out, I'd say, 80% of the marks, all the fine marks. There's some deep ones left. Um, so I'm going to carry on along this panel with the rotary. Probably won't film all of that, and then I'll come back once I've finished with the rotary and when I'm about to start with the dual action. So that's the lower section polished with the uh, rotary polisher and the red H8 Koch Kemi, which is their harshest polish. I've then wiped it down with the Spice Hacker 7010. Someone actually asked me on one of my previous videos, uh, what do you dilute the 7010 with? Like, they seem to think it was a 7010 dilution ratio. It's not. The product is called Spice Hacker, that's the brand, and then the product is 7010 7010. It's a body shop panel wipe, uh, it removes all kinds of silicones and oils, so then you can see the true uh, nature of the paint and it's not got um, the oils. Because uh, at the end of the day, although these are body shop polishers and they say silicon free, um, they will have got oils and glazes and um, lubricants in to help carry the abrasives uh, that when you're polishing, it's not just gonna be a, a dry paste or a dry powder. Um, but then once you've wiped it off, sometimes those, uh, those oils and glazes will fill the marks um, that are remaining. So you think, oh, I've got a good correction. But then when it's wiped down, you can see that there's still a couple of marks that you still need to chase perhaps. So I've wiped it down and it's got rid of most of the finer swirls. There's some deeper marks that I can see that I'll show you in a sec in a minute. Um, and I wasn't particularly that careful with the rotary polisher. So I've left some buffer trails. In fact, I'll grab the camera now and show you those. So do you remember before, right down low, there was um, buffer trails right down on the sill? Well, they've reduced a bit and they've changed because there's now the new buffer trails. There's obviously that steep scratch still right along the base. So I will, um, I'll hit that in a moment with the smaller Rupez polisher to try and improve that. But then in the light, can you see that there's, there's a little cluster of marks there still? Um, in fact, there's quite a few marks all over the panel, but they're particularly bad around that section. Um, in fact, if I turn the, uh, just turn the exposure down a bit, because then you can see the defects more. So you see those, these, um, just around, where's my finger? Around here. That's from the machine polisher where it's left its own little marks. There's a nice deep scratch running across the panel, just there, look. Obviously that deep scratch down on the sill that I've already shown you. Where is it? There you go. All the way just above that swage line. If I grab the hand inspection lamp, you can see it's not clear. There's a lot of speckles. That's from the road rash from the front wheel. And that won't improve much more than that. Um, obviously the customer had the front of the car repainted, but didn't want to go to the expense of having the whole car repainted because uh, it's so low down on the panel when it's outside you're not going to notice those too much and that was the decision that he made obviously if you're chasing complete perfection you would have this this panel and probably the back arches uh, repainted as well um, but you can see the buffer trails that's been left so there's lots of light movement and dancing around on the panel that has been left from the rotary polisher if i'd been a lot more careful and finished it off with a flat polisher that would have um, been an awful lot better, but I knew I was going over it again with the DA polisher. So that's the level that the rotary's got it to. That would have taken 
two or three hits with the DA, just I know from experience. Let me turn it around. So that's the level that the rotary polisher has got it to, and from experience of testing the panel the other side, I know that if I had um, only done it with the DA polisher, the dual action repairs polisher, then it would take two or three then it would take one or two hits to get it to this level. So it was quicker to hit it with the rotary polisher just to cut back most of the marks. Um, and then these next ones I'm going to chase with the, with the dual action polisher. Again with the Koch Kemi H8 and this time on the Meguiar's microfiber cutting pad. Um, same amount of polish, you don't need an awful lot. Um, so just two um, and there was a tiny little bit that spurted out there as well. And now I'm going to go along, keep moving my lights, keep checking with my inspection lamp and then really focus on these uh, more random uh, marks uh, now that the panel is cleared of the lighter swirls I can see which bits I really need to focus on. Uh, right, it's not going too badly. I've um, done the back part of the door, needed a couple of more hits with the dual action polisher. Um, I've kind of got to this point, I've still got to do the front of the door. There's another little mark there actually, a um, bit gross maybe for you guys, but it's, I just tend to lick my finger and circle it so I, I don't forget it. Um, so two of the downsides with these dual action polishers, firstly, um, maybe it's not the dual action polishers fault actually, but the microfiber pad, um, if you can see, it's actually got the, so they're fairly long fibers, not long fibers, but um, so it's got these fibers that are great for doing a bit of machine polishing uh, but they get really clogged up uh, focus 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 but they get really clogged up after each uh, polishing hit uh, it's still quite dark as well let me change that stupid you can't change it while it's recording anyway uh, so these get clogged up so you need to blow it out with i use compressed air um, into a bucket which you've seen before um, just so you don't get uh, dust all over your room. So that's one downside. The other downside is because they're dual action and not forced rotation, when you get down to this kind of concave section of the panel, the polisher doesn't spin well. Up here, it will spin around nicely. When you get down to here, it just tends to then go up and down. So that's where this little tool is um, needed um, because then it can carry on rotating down on that small concave section so that's what I'm going to do now blow the pad out ready a little bit of polish and then I can attack that uh, deep scratch that was down on the lower part of the door uh, right, uh, almost the end of my short day on a Sunday. Uh, the last thing you saw me doing was the lower section here with the small polisher, which has taken the mark out, I'd say like 95 to 98%. It's quite a deep line though, so I haven't kept chasing it, especially because it's near this swage line. Um, but I'll show you that when I pick the camera up and um, show you close up a bit later. One hit with the rotary polisher to take most of the marks out. Then it was turned into two to three hits with the uh, Rupes dual action polisher. Um, and now I'm going to go over with the finishing pad. So this is a, uh, hang on. This is a hex logic quantum pad. Uh, obviously this is a green one, which I think is the medium, um, medium in the scale. I think they call it a light cut. And again, because this is very hard paint, this is um, a good pad to finish down on this hard Mercedes paint. Uh, also corrected the rear wing, can you see? Uh, so that now I've put this pad on, I don't have to keep swapping once I've done this panel and then go back to correcting the rear quarter. And as I said before, with the Koch Kemi F5 or yellow polish. Um, once you're onto the finishing polish, you, I tend to use the same amount. I'm just gonna put four dots on to start off with because it's a new pad. Um, but then after that, I'll do two dots. And you can work on a larger section. So I'm gonna aim to do half this uh, lower door. Uh, pretty much the same process as the uh, cutting polish though. Looking to keep the polisher and the pad really flat and consistent on this one. This is the last time you'll pass over the paint with the polisher, so this is the final finish. Um, and like I said before, I've aimed to get the paint pretty perfect. It's now just a slightly 
It's now just slightly hazy, but other than that, it's pretty much corrected. There's not really any buffer trails or holograms on it. So this is just the final step, just to make sure it's kind of really clear. Got that perfect clarity that you're after um, once it's corrected. Right, let's wrap this video up. Uh, it's now five to four. I think I started recording this video about 11.30ish. Um, so that's kind of how long it took to do the door. Most of the time was on that lower door to be honest. Remember I'd already actually corrected the upper part of this um, and the upper part of the back wing. Uh, so all of that time was just the lower part of the door and the lower part of the rear quarter. Uh, just to get it to that perfect look, that's what happens with the full correction detail in an enhancement detail, which I might put a bit more into in the next video. Um, I'll show you kind of how good the paint comes up with just an enhancement detail and where the difference lies and why there's a big cost difference between the two. The paint on this, I'm very happy with, like I said before, nice deep um, metallic blue. Uh, there are one or two marks that wouldn't come out, they're a little bit deep for me to carry on chasing, but they're only kind of that big and there's probably, I think I've seen two of them on the whole panel. Uh, which compared to what it looked like beforehand is a massive improvement and that's the level I aim to get to for the full correction. Obviously try and aim for 100% but you don't want to keep chasing those last few marks if it's going to risk going through the lacquer. <laughs> so like I said that's it for this video, I'll pick up the camera and show you the close-up uh, of the paint but be sure to uh, subscribe to this channel uh, which you can do below the video if you're watching on a desktop or on a phone i'm not actually too sure just try and find the subscribe link uh, and then there's a bell next to the subscribe link so if you tap that every time i upload a video you'll get a notification um, instagram at cams auto gleam and at gtechnic cambridge um, would appreciate a follow and a like on some of the pictures on there uh, but until next time i will leave you with the uh, fully polished and wiped down paint uh, remember this is before any g-technic coatings as well uh, so this is just the bare paint uh, with no coatings on it thanks for watching <laughs>